we have a tremendous, we call them the grey hairs, the old experienced seasoned individuals that have been in the industry for 40 years or more. Many of them started on the tools, worked through that cycle, and some of them are running their own companies or their executives with large GCs or whatever, and they're reaching the end of their career. The problem is, whatever they learned, whether it was trade school or they were an engineer, they only learned to do the trade and the profession to pass the exams or whatever. Learning how to do the industry takes about 30 years or more because it's an experiential learning. You have to do it to learn it. So when people with 40 years of tenure and experience leave, you don't readily replace them, especially when you haven't created a succession strategy where there's people right behind them. On the other side of things, you've got a younger generation that is more instant in its communication style. Even email is considered old-fashioned. And there's a casualness of communication that they consider normal. The problem being, when you look at the multiple levels of communication that happen on a construction project, much of which is real-time, much of which is verbal, that needs to be confirmed to be put in some kind of written form so you have a point of reference to go back to later if there's a dispute or a problem. That's a major issue because the paper trails don't exist in the electronic world. Maybe There's maybe not even an email because nobody's disciplined to realize the importance of it. The other thing though is not only does the reliance on email and instant communication mean there's a lack of documented evidence and, and information. Relationships between individuals aren't being built to the same degree because people don't even talk. They don't even meet, they don't sit down. They just electronically communicate. I mean, I sometimes think that some of the people, if they bumped into each other in the shopping mall, they wouldn't even recognize each other's voices because they haven't even spoken on the phone. From the perspective of an industry, when, when it's somewhat of a boom, and it's been a little, it's not being steady, but really we haven't seen a major dip, prolonged dip in work in, in the likes of Calgary for nearly 15 years. It's been pretty busy since the late 90s, with very little let up. Just like with the energy industry, the construction industry, when things are booming, A, you're too busy, to, to be able to do something different. And B, there's, there's work coming in. I'm turning jobs down, there isn't a problem. And so therefore you tend not to get innovation in a boom or a bubble. When things start to change and you get a slowdown, people become more needy, they become more aware, they look at cost reduction to initially stave off the problem, but eventually they realize that they maybe need to look at some of their historic habits and procedures and you start getting this appetite to maybe start innovating and, and looking at new techniques. There are big obstacles to lean or any new initiative by virtue of it's different. Human nature doesn't like change. Highly risk averse industries like change even less because it introduces an unknown element. And there's some big obstacles at all levels. It's not just in contractors, it's not just in consultants and architects, it's not just in owners, it's across the board. However, one of the biggest influencers of change is the end user, is the customer, who can begin to demand more from the industry instead of settling for less. Once that happens, it creates a demand for the, for the approaches that maybe we need to learn and we need to adopt. So I do think if there's any catalyst, it would be the end user groups beginning to raise the bar.